Hello and welcome. So for this section, we're going to be going through our user interface within Reason. Reason offers a lot of different customization and routing options, and many of those are beyond the scope of what we will be going through in this tutorial. But what I'd like to do is rather than cover each individual button and dial within Reason, I'll cover the ones that are most important to us and the ones that are most essential for getting our song started. Before we start, for our Mac users, we want to make sure that our function keys are activated. So what we want to do is go to the top left, choose System Preferences, choose Keyboard, then make sure this option is checked. Use F1, F2 keys as standard function keys. So this will allow us to use the F5, F6, and F7 key to access the different views within Reason. So now we're just going to go through the user interface. Starting at the top left, we have our browser. And this is where we have all of our instruments, effects, and sounds that we will need to make our song. Starting at the top left, we have the instrument section. So this is all of our drum machines and synthesizers and instruments that we would need to play to make our song. Next, we have effects such as distortions, reverbs, and delays. Then we have the utility section, which is some of our pe arpeggio effects, mergers and splitters. And then we have our player section, which is scales and chords. If so, if we want to lock our synthesizer into a certain scale, then we can do that using this device and also another arpeggiator. The next section we have is our sound section. So here we have a bunch of sounds and loops that come within reason. And we can take those and we can import those into our tracks. We have a section called rack extensions. So these are extensions and combined effects that reason has combined for us. And what we could do is we could take these and we can drop those in on our instruments and create these really creative effects. Then we have our home, our home folder, our desktop folder, any song samples that come with our project. So if we opened another project, we might find our samples in here. Also any recent patches that we've opened up and then also any folders that we've added ourselves. So I'm just going to remove this and show you how I bring one in. So I could just take any folder that I like this one contains some drums. I can just take it and I can just drag it and drop it like that. Then I click on there. And now to audition the sound, I could just click and select each one of the sounds. If I want to adjust the volume that I'm auditioning at, I can just do it via this audition volume. Next, I'm going to go through the different views within Reason. So Reason has three different sections. We have a mixer section, a rack section, and a sequencer section. At the moment, I'm in a hybrid view mode, which means that I can view all three sections at once. But I can also switch this by switching either this little circle here by clicking it on and off, opens and closes the section, or by using the hotkeys F5 through F7. So F5 is for the mixer, F6 is for the rack, and F7 is for the sequencer. So that gives us the full view of that particular section. Another thing that we can do is we can actually take and we can actually move this out to another screen. So if I, so right now I've just taken the mixer and I've separated this into another window. And then behind it, I have my rack and I have my sequencer. So this is useful if we're using multi-screen. And then if I just exit out of that, it'll just go right back to the way it was, back to the hybrid view. So now we're just going to go through the mixer section. 
We can do that by pressing the F5 key. So the mixer section is a section that we don't really need to worry about at the moment until we're later on in this tutorial. But as we add tracks, those will go into this blank space here and they'll look like channel strips. What we see at the moment is our master channel. So this is where all of our sound is coming out of. And one of the most important things is to make sure that the sound never goes above zero into the red. If it goes into the red, then we'll start to get distortion. Uh, not a good type of distortion, a digital distortion that's very harsh and unpleasant sounding. And we don't want to do that. So the next section is our rack section. And this is where we can add instruments and effects. So I'll do a demonstration of how we do that. So if I want to add this drum machine, I can just take it. I could just drag it into the window and there it is. I can also go to one of the presets. I could take it and I could double click it or I could just take it and drag it. And now I have this deep house set here. If I want to take and drop in an effect, I could do that by pressing the arrow above the drum machine and then pressing show insert effects then going into an effect. And so if I want this distortion, I can just take this, I could drop this in. Now, if I want a preset for the distortion, I can take that and I can drop that onto the distortion. And as you can hear, that's now, that distortion is now affecting the drum machine. If I want to delete this channel, then I can just press the top module here above the distortion. I can just press delete and then delete all in group and that removes it. The next section we have is the sequencer section, which I can access pressing by pressing F7. So this is a section that I'm going to cover a little bit more deeply in the next tutorial. Down at the bottom, we have the transport functions and some more options. So if I press this keys, this will allow me to trigger mini notes either via the mouse or using computer keys. That's really useful if you don't have a MIDI controller. Next we have a our regroove mixer. So this will allow us to add different groove templates to our, our MIDI tracks if we wish at a later point. That's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial, so I won't be going through that anymore for this one. Next, we have our quantization. So if we're recording MIDI notes in via a MIDI controller, what this will do, this will quantize the, the MIDI notes to the nearest 1 16th of a note. So we can switch this. So if we want a looser feel, we might want one eighth or a quarter. Or if we want to switch it off, we can just press shuffle. And then whatever we play will be whatever actually records on the screen. Sync mode will leave to internal. If we wanted to link it up with something like Ableton and then um, use Ableton's MIDI clock, then we could use something like Ableton Link. Next is just the timing for our track. After that, we have our two options, pre and click. So the click just allows us to get the tempo of the track if we were playing a MIDI note in. So we just have this little click. Pre is an option that we have selected if we're getting ready to record something and then we want a four count in. So what'll happen is if I hit this record, it'll count in one, two, three, four, and then it will start recording. Okay. So now it's recording. Okay. Next, we have our tempo. So we can turn our tempo up or turn our tempo down. We can change our time signature or we can tap our tempo here. We also have rewind and fast forward buttons, stop, play, record, dub and alternate take 
for recordings is primarily related to if you're recording a sound in, you want to do an alternate take, then you can do that on an audio track. We also have our loop function where we can turn it, turn our loop on and off, and then we can adjust our loop braces in the section we want to loop here. We can also adjust where we want the loop braces to be via this section here. Then this next section is primarily to let us know if our computer's overloading or if we're using too much power. Delay compensation is if we're using a third-party VST. Some of the VSTs take a little bit of time to process a sound before the sound actually comes out into your ears. And so what delay compensation does is it automatically adjusts all the other tracks so that when the sound comes out, it's not actually delayed. Finally, we have an option to upload our song to Ali Hoopa, which is a social media platform, kind of like SoundCloud. And that is it for our user interface. So for our next tutorial, we'll be going more into the sequencer and the different options as well as the piano roll. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.